Meditation is medication. In fact, the art of biblical meditation is a lost art in Christian discipleship. A lot of us wonder about how to hear clearly, specifically, unmistakably, we pinpoint accuracy, the voice of God. If you want to develop wisdom, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, discretion, prudence, direction, knowing what to do, making decisions, and living a fruitful Christian life, you have to learn how to meditate on the Word of God, how to ponder and pause over the Word of God and then pray God's Word back to Him. In prayer, you talk to God. In meditation, God talks to you life. So if you want to hear God clearly, Take in the thoughts of God by pondering, musing over, chewing the word of God. Spend time with the word of God. Spend time meditating on the word of God, musing over the word of God. And then begin to ponder over it and then speak it back to God. And that is meditation. If thinking is the most important thing, then thinking is everything. And I titled this topic, Meditation is Medication. In fact, if you meditate on the scripture, you become a spiritual giant. Because this is a simple but powerful tool for personal development, self-direction, Self healing, self power or personal power, and it's a tool to turn your world around. Because if you don't know how to meditate, you'll be wondering what the voice you are hearing. Where did it come from? Is it me? Is it God? Is it my imagination? Or is it the devil? And we resolve all these by taking time and meditating on the Word of God. How? Don't be all over the place. Do it one step at a time, one chunk at a time. That's why computer is called bits and bytes. It is information retriever system. You can never remember or proclaim anything that you didn't first of all store in your memory bank. In other words, if you don't, first of all, meditate on it, ponder over it, think over it deeply, rehearse it, play it back in your mind, supercharge your mental software, you cannot release it from your mouth because you won't even remember it. That's why knowledge that is not retrievable is not usable. So if you want to sharpen your prophetic accuracy, Build your spiritual capacity. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. You got to learn to meditate on the Word. Now, child of God, there are seven basic steps for biblical meditation. I'm not talking about spooky New Age practices like mindfulness meditation, transcendental meditation, mind control, emptying your mind, No, our mantra, our focus phrase is the word of God, is the thoughts of the Lord, is God's mind. About Einstein said it differently. He said, tell me the mind of God, all other things are details. The seven steps of meditation or seven process that work together in tedem are focus or localization, personalization, Verbalization, memorization, visualization, internalization, and actualization. The mind thinks in pictures. Our life moves 
in pictures in the direction of our most dominant and persistent thoughts. So taking the thoughts of God, the thoughts rule everything. Thoughts create images. Thoughts create ideas. Thoughts create concepts. Thoughts create innovation, direction, discretion. Thought create everything you see in the external world. In fact, part of spirituality is how you manage and direct your thought process. Your thought also fits your belief system, or what I call belief operating system. Your belief now forms your faith. Faith now creates power because it takes faith switch to ignite the power of God, or what we call anointing. From anointing, you can move on to glory, and from one level of glory to another, from glory to glory, and so on and so forth, because God has no limit. So, you see, the basis of everything we do is our belief system. And if you don't feed your belief, your thought process, your memory bank with the word of God, you will never change your world. You'll be like everyone else. If you don't want to be different, you cannot make a difference. And what makes all the difference in the world is biblical meditation. You use it to sharpen your spiritual senses, hear from God, proclaim the mind and purposes of the heart of the Father to his children. That's what we call prophecy. Meditation is so useful even in self-healing and how the Holy Ghost leads you because the Holy Ghost works with the Word of God. The Word of God is the basis of everything we do. In fact, Christians who don't meditate on the Word are never rooted, grounded, established, and caught on the Lord. Joshua 1 said it differently. He said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to what is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. And that translation, Amplified Version says, Thou shalt deal wisely with the affairs of this life. And that is wisdom. Wisdom in Greek is regarded as Sophia, which is the ability to regulate relationship between man, God, and circumstances. With meditation, you can dominate your circumstances. You can solve problems. You can diffuse obstacles. You can get personal direction, personal power, personal tool for personal development. You can become a spiritual giant. In fact, the Chinese believe that if you can meditate on the world, if you can meditate for five minutes, you can rule the world. And I say, actually, you may not rule the whole world, but you can rule your world by meditating just for five minutes on the word of God. If the word of man can create power, can create success, you can imagine what the word of God would do. Far much better, greater, much more powerful, wiser and permanent than anything we see or need or hear or achieve in the world if we can meditate on the word of god powerful child of god you discover that if we are not meditating we will not become sensitive to the voice of the holy spirit do it every day it's a daily occurrence in psalm 1 1 he said Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the world of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. He is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, whatsoever he doeth prospers. The conduct brought the product. It was like eating food daily he meditated the psalmist meditated day and night in fact because of that david the psalmist said i am wiser i'm smarter i'm better than my teachers because god's word he called it testimony has been his meditation 
child of God, you can make it your own meditation. Meditation is a cure all. People say there is no silver bullet. There is no panacea. Well, the word of God is the panacea. The word of God is the silver bullet. The word of God is power. It's the word of life. It's the word of his grace. It's word of healing. It's word of deliverance. It's word of discretion and direction. It's word of guidance. It's word of power. It's word of overflow. It's word of triumph. Because we overcome by the word of God. We excel by the word of God. We lead and rule and reign by the word of God. We change situation and circumstances by the word of God. I love the word of God because it's the sword of the spirit. It's the basis of everything I do. In fact, the word of God is power. There's power in the world. And when you have power, it is the ability to dominate, rule, and reign, and change your circumstances and fulfill purpose. That's power. If you don't have the ability to solve problems, ability to overcome, ability to excel, ability to succeed, you are not powerful. In fact, the Bible says in 4 John 5, 4, it says, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That faith is talking about the word of God because he can never develop faith or God kind of faith without developing confidence in the word of God. And you cannot develop confidence without meditation. And you cannot meditate until you pause and ponder and think over the word of God that will dominate your situation, circumstances, so that can you rule to over, excel, to overcome anything the enemy throws at you. Child of God, this is the key. The mind is the battleground, is the crisis point, is the bull's eye of God's target. It's also the bull's eye of Satan's target. The scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to know what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. See, when we meditate on the word, we resolve doubt, we diffuse circumstances, we diffuse arguments, deep-seated unbelief, we create clarity, we bring understanding, wisdom comes, revelation comes, and with revelation, you have elevation. Because you begin to have revolution. You know, and when you have revolution, you make resolution to walk in God, to walk in power, to dominate situation and circumstances. Because your word is what you use to change your world. You know, the word of faith, the book of Hebrew tells, told us, created the universe, created the world. You know, we understand that by faith, the world we see was made from what do not yet appear. The invisible rules the visible. Your inner world rule your external world. Your impression rule your expression. So if you make it the word of God, if you meditate on the word of God, you become so powerful. You change your situation, change your circumstances. You dominate things. Now the seven process of biblical meditation like I just catered for us is first of all, you have to focus on a particular phrase, our mantra, our focus phrase, of course, is the word of God, nothing else. The word of power, the word of his grace, the word of victory, the word that solves problems, situations, and circumstances. Secondly, we have to personalize the word. That's where our emotions is attached to it. Use personal pronouns, make it your own. Take God's ideas, imbibe it, incorporate it, and adapt it as yours. In other words, God's thoughts becomes your thought through meditation. Then begin to say it with your own mouth. In other words, verbalize it. When you verbalize it, you put it into your consciousness, into your memory bank. You know, we confess the word because we want to possess the world. And then you memorize it, store it in your memory bank. So that when time comes, situation and circumstances come, you begin to fire the bullet of the word of God. Because you can never remember or retrieve whatever that is not first memorized or stored in your memory bank through the canvas of your imagination, the drawing board of destiny. I love to talk about visualization because the mind thinks in pictures and you keep on rehearsing or visualizing or seeing or make sure 
or take pictures upon pictures of what is already stored in your memory bank. That's what we call visualization. It's different from imagination, even though memorization is based on what you have in your canvas, the canvas of imagination, the drawing board of destiny. And I love to talk about verbalization because you have to keep on saying it to see it. Keep on confessing it to possess it. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. This is why and how confession of the word is so powerful. When you memorize the word of God and begin to confess it, you walk in absolute faith because you begin to hear yourself. You don't know what to believe until you hear it from your own mouth. Internalization is what I love to talk about because this is the sixth point in the meditation process or the sixth step in the phases and components of meditation. You know, when you come into internalization, you have to harmonize the two minds. We have one brain, but two states of the mind. See, the book of James said, a double-minded person is an unstable person. He is tossed around by the wave of the sea, by every wind of the doctrine. Say, let not that man think that you will receive anything of the Lord. See, you have to resolve and dissolve doubts in your consciousness. And you have to marry the two minds that are at war with each other. The monkey char, you know, the one that is opposing the word of God, the one that has programmed us into tradition, into thinking like the rest of the people, like the world. So when you resolve it through your deeper mind, through your subconscious mind, through the mind that is connected to the mind of God, the mind of Christ, the sound mind, you begin to dominate the external mind, the monkey chatter, the mind that is programmed by the external senses, the so-called common senses or the five senses of you know seeing, hearing, test, smell, feeling, or emotions. And then finally, actualization is when you not apply the word. When you apply the word, then you change your world. The victory, the miracle comes when you apply the word by obedience as you appropriate it. The amazing thing is that the acronym is AM. Um, so when you meditate, Mr. Am, I call it Mr. Am. M is meditation. R is revelation. The other A is application. And the, other, the last M is manifestation or materialization. That's when, after going through the sixth process, the seventh process is when you begin to actualize what you visualize because you practicalize by obedience, by application, by doing it. Because the test of the pudding is in the doing. See, man is a threefold being. We are spirits or eternal spirits just like God. We have a soul and we live in an earth suit called a body. When you meditate, it affects all aspects of your life, your soul, and your destiny. Your thoughts become life-changing, faith-generating, life-transforming, mind-expanding. And that is what creates power. That's what creates you to, or makes you have transformation, renewal restoration, reawakening, reformation. And without the renewing of the mind, there's no transformation. And without transformation, there's no achievement. See, you cannot appropriate the things of God with your own renewed mind. Because if your mind is not renewed through meditation, your corner mind will join with your body and keep you a baby Christian and you wouldn't receive anything by faith because everything we receive by God or through God is always by faith. If you want to walk in God, you must walk by faith. In fact, God is so much inclined with faith that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when you resolve that and remove unbelief and deep-seated double-mindedness, 
through meditation because the Bible said the entrance of his word giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. You now connect your deeper mind, your subconscious mind with the superconscious mind of God. And when you are connected to the mind of God, all things are possible to them that believe. In fact, God said through the Son, Jesus Christ, that if you can believe, you will see the glory of God. You will begin to perform. You begin to excel. You begin to succeed. You begin to walk in victory. You begin to transcend situation and circumstances. You begin to realize your purpose and direction and destiny in God. And you win your world. Thank you. God bless you. Talk to you later. Dr. Ozo.